right, let me get begin with Walter, uh, Michelle, and talk about, you know, what do we know about brain development uh, that bears on public policy? Well, I think for me, Charlie, the, um, the part about brain development that bears tremendously on public policy and that uh, I think is the best news that people who care about uh, the potential of human beings to, uh, to develop well have had in a very long time is the amazing plasticity of the human brain. The, the, the plasticity of the human brain is tremendous and it's particularly great in the first few years of life. And something quite uh, miraculous happens uh, when one watches normal human development in the period uh, that starts with birth and goes to five, six or so years. Uh, the, it's a transformation that I became aware of before there was a brain science. Uh, it's a transformation I watched in my own three daughters as they went from uh, being what kids are at birth, which is completely tied to their own sensations, completely dependent on caregivers, uh, to becoming p potentially distractible by the time they're six months old and learning to distract themselves in ways that could give, give relief to their own emotional distress, that is, they could begin to calm themselves, to something really extraordinary that happens between two and five. And what happens between two and five is that they're able to begin to inhibit impulses, uh, to delay gratification, to keep a goal in mind, uh, to use working memory to keep going, to shift their attention in extraordinary ways. And that's really uh, what uh, the basis became uh, for the study that I did that's now referred to, uh, Eric talked about it, as the, as the marshmallow experiment. It's a wonderful experiment. Uh, what, what happened to the marshmallow experiment? Although it's referred to as the marshmallow experiment, it actually isn't always marshmallows. Very often it's Oreo cookies, or it could be tiny little pretzel sticks. But the point is, it's very small rewards that are pitted against each other that the child has chosen from a whole bunch. So what you're seeing in this picture is a little girl who's chosen uh, to wait for two Oreo cookies rather than one immediately. And she knows that at any time she can ring that bell the experimenter will come back into the room uh, and she will, if she rings the bell, she'll get the one Oreo cookie, but she'll forgo the two. On the other hand, if she waits for the lady to come back by herself and doesn't ring the bell and doesn't begin nibbling on the cookie, she gets the two. Right. That's, that's the experiment. Let me now. make sure that I understand this correctly. So she gets one cookie and then the instruction is that if you don't eat this cookie right away. If you can hold on for a while, then you will have a chance to get a second cookie. It's even simpler. Uh, be, before she starts, the little girl has already made a choice. She's taken what she would like to have, right. which is cookies, and she's been told, would you like the one or would you like the two of the cookies? And she's decided she would like the two. So what she understands now and what is practiced with the stuff right in front of her, both the two cookies that she gets if she waits, the one cookie that she can have immediately, is that it's entirely up to her at any time she can ring the bring me back bell, the experimenter jumps back into the room and it's hers. So that's, only one, that's, not the other. Uh, only then one. she gets only one and not the two. That's the experiment. Right. It's simplicity right. itself. I've always right. believed that it's important to be able to eat your methodology. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. so... I feel like marshmallows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah. That, that, that's the study. Now, the important thing about it is it provided us with an opportunity to do experiments on how does the representation of the object of desire, of the thing you want, like the two cookies, make it possible to do this delay thing, to make it possible for, for a child as young as four years old to be able to wait 15 minutes in a room that's deliberately barren, that's deliberately stripped. There are no distractors. She's got nothing to entertain herself with. What we found here that was surprising was that as these children at Stanford, where these studies began, were growing up, it became clear that they were uh, different in ways that actually connected to how long they were able to wait initially. 
And uh, I began to do follow-up work to see if we could find correlations between how long the child waited in this situation at age four or five and what was happening to them when they were young adolescents, when they were 12 years old, 13 years old, and so on. And that was the beginning. And we found to our surprise that beginning in adolescence, there were very strong correlations. Uh, much larger than we had any reason to anticipate, uh, between seconds of delay time uh, and outcomes that were very important, including at age 16 and 17, their uh, scores on the scholastic aptitude test, right. which are very important for admission to college in the United States, including things like ratings by parents and teachers of their social and cognitive competence in adolescence. Uh, and uh, including uh, a whole set of things that became increasingly clear when we were following them at age 32. Uh, okay. And that included uh, less tendency to develop a large body mass index, less tendency mm -hmm. towards obesity, less cocaine drug uh, 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 drug use, uh, and so on. Walter, what, I, you make me uh, think about public policy right away. If these um, tests are so predictive of future behavior, if, if it appears that a kid who can delay gratification for those 15 minutes turns out to get better SAT scores, to do better at a job later in life even, um, how, how would ordinary people in the public be reassured that such a test at such an early age wouldn't brand the kid for life. Particularly as, the kids who don't do well on this. That's what I'm thinking. The kids who don't do well. Yep. Are, are, do we then have a kind of self-fulfilling Prophecy. prophecies about these kids that will uh, sort of trail them all through their lives. Is there, what's, what reassurance would they have? So the idea of being frozen in the position on the measure is completely off. We're talking about correlations that are significant. We're not talking about uh, a destiny for an individual. So uh, I want to be very clear that uh, a branding would be completely missing the point, particularly since the most exciting findings about the marshmallow experiments are the ease with which it is possible to change an individual's ability to delay gratification. And there are ways uh, to do that. There are very straightforward ways to do it that connect with how the brain works. In the experiments we've done, we've taken children who were unable to wait for more than a minute and suggested to, to them before we leave the room, if you want to, when you want to, you can make believe that this stuff in front of you is just a picture. Put a frame around it in your head. And the child understands that, knows what a picture is, knows how to put a frame around it in the head. And the moment that that happens, you walk out of the room, the child is able to wait 15 minutes. You show the child the picture of the object and you say, make believe it's real. Okay? And the child rings the bell within a minute or two. <laughs> wow. So these, these experiments, which get virtually no attention in the media, are really the thing that has such, I think, tremendous public policy implications because it means you can teach this. Mm -hmm. And you can teach it exactly in the earliest years of life. You can teach it in preschool. You can use the remarkable imagination, the amazing imagination that kids have at that age to, to utilize the imagination and to, to do a whole variety of things that kids who are able to do this, in fact, uh, illustrate vividly and beautifully. So that's, that's why I think the interpretation to be taken from the findings is that this is an enormously important skill. It has predictive uh, qualities. It has protective effects, but it is teachable. It is changeable. Uh, it is contextualized, uh, and even individuals who are very high at delayability are strikingly unable to delay under some circumstances, etc., as we know from all the fallen heroes in the headlines. All right, Dan